Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to Syriana Analysis. I'm your host, Kirk al The events in Palestine, Israel are still unfolding. There is lots of developments. Israel officially declared a state of war, which is the first time Israel is declaring a state of war since 1973 war. Hezbollah sent a message to Israel through the Egyptian mediator that if Israel wages a ground offensive, against Gaza, then Israel will have to face the repercussions or the consequences for that, and namely that Hezbollah will also intervene in this war directly. And today we have already seen that Hezbollah is firing some rockets from southern Lebanon on the settlements in Israel, and also flying some drones over northern Israel. I'm also following the reactions in the Arabic and also Western, uh, let's say, online community. Most of the Arabic uh, reactions that I have seen, they're calling for the continuation of the war offensive against Israel, and they are calling on Hamas to continue the advances until Hamas can create a link between the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Both areas, West Bank is occupied by Israel. It's a, ter- it's a territory that belongs to Palestine, according to international law, and the Gaza Strip is besieged by Israel for a very long time now. But there was something that uh, didn't surprise me at all, of course. There was a new community that emerged after the Ukraine war, and uh, those who call themselves, of course, they call themselves conservative, right-wingers. And they were always arguing that why do we have to send all this money to Ukraine and why do we have to intervene in the Ukrainian conflict? Ukraine has nothing to do with us. Why do we do this? And why are we prioritizing Ukraine over uh, our our country like the United States? And also they were saying that uh, we are anti-war. We don't want for the United States to continue waging wars here and there or helping other countries to wage wars. But this time when it came to Israel, it's apparently that these people have different uh, criteria and they are calling for horrendous things on social media platforms like wipe them out, like uh, kill them all. And uh, there are also so many people who are posting fake stuff, by the way, or despite the community notes, but they're continuing, which raises the question if these people are just normal activists or paid propagandists in this regard. Personally, I said this in the past video, I categorically reject the and do not endorse any acts of crime against civilians, against women, against children. I've seen some photos and pictures and videos. Those are horrendous. I completely reject this type of uh, violence against any civilian, whether they are Israeli or none, whether they hold the double passport, whether they are settlers or not. Because during wars, uh, the military personnel should be from the Israeli side should be treated as prisoners of war, and the civilians should not be harmed at all. This is the my criteria. The other side sometimes say that after decades of, um, let's say, suppression, oppression, and um, like turning Gaza Strip into an open air, open air prison, basically for two million people, this was a reaction against this oppression. So there are two sides of this. Personally, even if that I agree that Israel has to lift the siege on Gaza, and I call on Israel to end the occupation of the Palestinian territories, Syrian territories, Lebanese territories, but I do not endorse acts of violence against uh, unarmed people. And even the armed, let's say, Israeli forces, if they surrender, you have to treat them as prisoners of war. This is my humanitarian criteria in this regard. But in the past video, I told you that uh, the last time Israel was shocked or surprised by an attack from an Arabic side was in 1973 war when Syria and Egypt jointly waged an offensive on Israel in order to liberate the territories that Israel occupied unjustly and annexed them in 1967. According to international law, the territories that Syria and Egypt wanted to liberate belong to Syria and Egypt. Anyways, 40 years later, again in October, the same month, in 2023, this time Hamas waged a surprise attack. And I told you this is, in my opinion, impossible for Hamas alone or Jihad alone to wage such an attack. This is well coordinated between different parties 
that surely include Iran, Hezbollah, Syria. This was a huge intelligence uh, operation, in my opinion. This is what I told you. But what if I am wrong this time? Because on this channel, we discuss different opinions, and sometimes I hit and sometimes I miss, right? So what if I'm wrong and this is a false flag attack? Or what if Israel was watching the other side, the Palestinian side, was preparing for his attack, and they didn't do anything about it so that they create a situation and the condition that they are being under attack by a terrorist organization that is considered terrorist organization by lots of Western governments. So this also creates this chaos and creates lots of also lots of pictures and videos emerge of any sort of, let's say, bloodshed here or there, whether against military personnel or against civilians. And this will also shape the public opinion in favor of Israel and the appetite will be for war. And this is what we also see today that Netanyahu came and declared war. The defense minister came and says that uh, they will turn Gaza Strip into hell. So what if I'm wrong and this was a false flag operation, which means in a way that Israel allowed it to happen? Because a lot of people also say, how is it possible that Israel with its huge military uh, and its, uh, um, its intelligence its technology and everything, they missed this thing. For example, Garrett Ike, who is the son of David Ike, he says, Israel with the most sophisticated intelligence services in the world and backdoor computer tech infiltrating everyone doesn't get taken by surprise. And on the fifth anniversary of the surprise attack by Egypt that kicked off the Yom Kippur War too, And that uh, add that to reports from Israelis that the army and police aren't coming to help them and it stinks. It's a catalyst for an attack on Iran and all the worldwide carnage that will come with that. So he believes that uh, this is uh, was allowed to happen so that uh, Iran would be accused and the Israelis and the Americans would wage war on Iran. David Icke, his father, also agrees with him and he says, surprise attack my arse. This is being allowed to happen. Hamas is owned by the cult. Netanyahu is owned by the cult. Mossad is owned by the cult. And the cult wants war involving cult on Iran. I'm not sure if this is all accurate and who is this cult and what are this cult are what is this cult is doing. Maybe he's referring to some other people I'm not aware of. But there is a, a former soldier from the Israeli army, and uh, she posted this six uh, seven minute video, and she says it's impossible for something like this to happen. She served in the military, also in the intelligence, and she says that the border fences and the border, let's say, line between Gaza Strip and the settlements are all watched twenty four seven. With they have sensors, cameras, and they also train on such scenarios how to abort it, and it doesn't make sense for her that uh, this attack happened and there was no reaction from the authorities that they allowed Hamas to come into the settlements and occupy them without any reaction from the Israeli side. So let's watch this and, and see what he has to say in this regard. People started to rely mostly that we just have the event here. started. We received the first formal statement from the IDF spokesperson and I will include an article with that statement in the notes. A year ago, there was a military operation in Gaza to prepare for such events, and ongoingly, there are trainings for these kind of scenarios. This raises serious questions for me, anyway, about Israeli intelligence. What happened? Two years ago, there, were, um, there was a successful deployment of underground barriers with sensors to alert exactly on these kind of terrorist breaches. Israel has one of the most advanced and high-tech armies. How come there was zero response to the border and fence breaching? I cannot understand that. Personally, I served in the IDF 25 years ago in the intelligence forces. There's no way, in my view, that Israel did not know of what's coming. A cat moving alongside the fence is triggering all forces. So this? What happened to the strongest army in the world? So she has a she has a point in my opinion here that what happened uh, to all this technology and all this training that they did on the borders in the past years. I also saved another tweet from 
this is another ex uh, military soldier from the Israeli army and uh, this is the translation uh, ex IDF soldier explains that the events that took place today are impossible she was a broader observer with the highest tech available um if a bird comes close we knew even even a cockroach came to our fence border we knew how did 400 hamas pass through today so i will just show you this uh, tweet very quickly so that you guys know what i am speaking about this is her and this is the tweet and this is her explaining also in uh, hebrew i don't know to be honest with you if I still want to believe that this was a surprise attack by Israel, although this is my initial thoughts about it. But what do you think, guys? Do you think that Israel was caught off guard? They were surprised, they were shocked, and they didn't know how to react? Or they knew that Hamas and Jihad are going to attack them, and they allowed them to come so that they create a public opinion and they open the appetite for war? And if Israel goes for war against Gaza, which means ground offensive, do you think that other parties will get involved, such as Hezbollah, such as Iran, such as Syria? Do you think that the end goal is a war between Israel and Iran, as David Icke and his son were predicting on social media platforms? Or do you see this only as a conspiracy theory? Let me, let me know, guys, your opinions in the comments below. I've been your host, Kirk Almasen of Syrian Analysis. I will see you soon.